Praise the Lord. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go right into prayer and we can get into the word. Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you, Lord Jesus. We magnify you, Lord God. We thank you for being in the presence of us, Lord Jesus, in the midst of us, Lord God. We love you. Lord God, thank you for always bearing witness that you're with us. Lord God, continue to speak to us on today, Lord God. Be in each and every manservant's mouth, Lord God. Be here in the midst of us. Speak to us, Lord God. Even myself, Lord Jesus, let myself be silent and your spirit speak today. Lord God, that we bind every evil spirit of torment, every spirit of confusion, every spirit of doubt, and everything that would bring in the spirit of error. Lord God, we bind that in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And across the airwaves, we bind it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. For every saint, every hearer, let them become not just hearers, but doers of your word, Lord God. Let us be doers of your word. Amen. We can be hearers all day long. That ain't going to be nothing, Lord Jesus. Let us be the doers that hear your word at the end that say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Hallelujah. Let us be that few, Lord God, and only by your grace, by your strength. And we thank you for your strength. We thank you for your joy. We thank you for your word showing us not to be in drunken excess of wine. Lord Jesus, but to be filled by your spirit and that your spirit, Lord God, will bring us joy, will bring us peace, Lord God, and you'll put songs and hymns in our mouth, Lord God, we thank you for this week's theme, Lord Jesus. Continue to bring the theme each week, Lord God. Let the word go forth sown and let it be deeply rooted within us with memory and understanding that we be fruitful, that we multiply and increase, yes, in the physical, but in the spiritual, Lord Jesus, even the more. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God. Be with each and every campus jurisdiction saint across the world, across the earth, in different cities, different nations, Lord God. Continue to work on the hearts, Lord God, and the souls, Lord Jesus, to where you send us to next. Lord God, and continue, Lord Jesus, to strengthen those who have been recently baptized, seeking your name and your will, Lord Jesus. Reveal yourself unto them, Lord God. Reveal yourself unto the people who are lost and poor and destitute and, and wretched and miserable and blinded by sin, Lord God. Raise them up, Lord Jesus. Raise them up out of every city, every nation, every kindred, every tongue, Lord God, to know you, to serve you, to love you, to worship you in spirit and in truth, that your truth of your word multiply and increase Amen. in these last days, Lord God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the, for the humbleness of heart, Lord Jesus, for the sincerity and truthful heart, Lord God, that will receive your word and correction even at these times when you correct us, Lord God. Thank you for correcting us for your rod and your staff. They comfort us. Your correction comforts us. Like as a child desires to be, to be uh, disciplined, the same and the spiritual for us, your rod comforts us with your discipline. We thank you, Lord God that we are sons and your daughters and we're not bastard children no longer, that we've been grafted in. And we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise, and we thank you and we reverence you, Lord God. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God for everyone in the house today. Thank you, Jesus, for everyone online. Amen. That may be joining in. Thank you, Lord. And so we'll get into the word of what the Lord just put on me. Really, again, was at the men's retreat and it's flowing over. Amen. Our cups were flowing over at the men's retreat and so much wisdom and, and insight of the word of the Lord, understanding, revelation. It was just bubbling and pouring out and it continues to, amen, that our cups, and I thank God that that was an answer to prayer, that our cups would be overfilled to come back and to pour out into our households and to the saints and everyone else, that God's blessing continues to pour out and multiply on everyone. And so what really came to me that we're going to speak on today, um, it really hit me hard at the men's retreat. Pastor Kip kind of got a little recording of it, and praise God for the, the power of God fell down on all of us, right? We were, we were in the study, and the Lord was there, but then, you know, the Lord just shows up sometimes, and he shows up so profoundly and powerful that we yearn for. And in that time, the Lord was showing me being consumed by forgiveness, so that's today's topic, that's today's title, amen, for the words, consumed by forgiveness. And our God is, a, is an, a consuming fire. So when we really think about it, God is in the business, is in the order of consuming a thing. He's a consuming fire, amen, to consume that sacrifice, hallelujah. And he consumed us with water baptism by his blood, to redeem us out of sin? Was it just to take away some sin? No, it was to take away all sin. And it was to take away all sin and to fill us with the Holy Ghost that we not abide in sin no more, that we walk upright before Him imperfectly, as the Word of God says. So He wants to consume everything that is of us, is of the world, is of the wicked one, and get rid of it 
and forgive us of the thing and that we move on. Amen. He's in the business of consuming things. And so it's a blessing that we have been consumed by God's forgiveness. Amen. amen. This is such a deep blessing. And, and I pray that, that the word go forth. Amen. And minister to us even the more today. Amen. So I'm going to open up with uh, the foundation scripture today is Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30 through 32. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Ephesians 4, 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, and wrath, and anger, and clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Amen. All of this needs to be done away with. It needs to be consumed by God's forgiveness of we were in all these things and that we grow in truth and righteousness and in the spirit of the Lord. Amen. Verse 32, and be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Amen. So we are to forgive one another as God has forgiven us. Consumed by his forgiveness, we should be consuming the enemy's tactics and plots and schemes of uh, whatever relationship you want to say. Husband, wife, children, in the church, in the world, in the workplace, everyone, we are to pour out that same forgiveness as Christ has forgiven us. And in so, we end up keeping our garment spot-free, wrinkle-free, and blemish-free, right? Really, this would be a huge blemish if you really think about it. I think this would be one of the worst things you could have on your garment thinking you're saved, but you have not forgiven others. And you don't continue forgiving others. God will hold, will hold you accountable for your sins, right? So we have to forgive, and this is a beautiful thing. This is a weapon in warfare. Forgiveness is a mighty weapon to keep us in salvation, to endure, to keep us at peace and free and full of the joy of the Lord, because unforgiveness will try to come and consume all of what the Lord has given us. Amen. So God wants to consume us with forgiveness. The devil wants to bring in bitterness and clamor and, and all these different things that God says, put away that and forgive quickly. Don't let the, the sun go down upon your wrath, right? So get, forgive speedily and quickly that you can continue to abide in the joy, which is your strength in the Lord, because that unforgiveness will try to consume all that. Amen. And so God wants us to have the same consuming forgiveness that we be not overtaken by a fault of, of bitterness and forgiveness and that ultimately we don't be kept out of the kingdom of the Lord. And but also in this walk even now, right? So Colossians 3.13 says, Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Amen. And so, obviously, we forgive no matter what the trespass has been. Obviously, things are easier to forgive more than others. But by the grace and help and the Spirit of God, we can forgive others as Christ has forgiven us, as the Scripture says. What if they did this? What if they did that? Even if your spouse was to go and cheat on you, neglect you, run away from you, uh, your, 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 your son, your daughter, whatever the case could be stole from you, it don't matter. Some things can hit heart more than others and, and, and rub a certain way that's more painful. It's a deeper cut. Right. But nevertheless, God says that we are to forgive one another as he's forgiven us. So no matter the deep treachery, the, 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 the poorness of that feeling, God says you're still to forgive. And the forgiveness is for you. Amen. This is a topic that's been being labored on heavily in, 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 in here the, in the ministry of OCOJ and the global Bible studies and, and everyone, the, the, the leaders were jumping in, Pastor Kid jumped in and the, the Holy Ghost was just was speaking to us. Forgiveness is for us because unforgiveness is of the devil and that's meant for us as well because he'll try to come and say, oh, you're not forgiven. You're still in condemnation and all these such things. Well, let us prove and improve our works by the word of the Lord and make sure that we're not in condemnation, first of all. Let that thing that's spoken against us, let it come back as a false accusation, right? Because we don't want to be in condemnation and living in sin, truthfully, on the way to hell and think that we're saved 
and believing a lie, right? Because that's of the wicked one as well. But when he tries to bring accusations, let them always come back false. Mm -hmm. Let us always forgive because the unforgiveness that he tries to rise up tries to hold us back. Hallelujah. From being free ourselves, having and abiding in the joy of the Lord and maintaining our garments spot free. Amen. And so just to stop right here as well, that in there are cases, right, that you don't you're not a doormat. You forgive and it's for you and you truthfully forgive. But that doesn't mean you're just a, a doormat. You get stepped on, walked on and you just let people in your house and take your stuff and do whatever. There's no order. There's no there's no godly wisdom abiding in you and in your life. No, absolutely not. Right. Hallelujah. But there's a place where you can be and that we have to be a forgiving them. Even if we have to discontinue speaking to someone, right? A brother's walking disorderly in the church. The word of God tells us to, to dis, dispart from them, right? For a season, Lord willing, that they'll repent, get in an order and come back. If they want to continue to abide in any type of treacherous ways or causing things to try and bring up strife and unforgiveness within the body, then that thing needs to be put away until that leprosy, that sin be healed. And if it not, it's not coming back into the camp. But nevertheless, whether they're repenting or they're not wanting to repent, we, on our side, in the camp, forgive. We forgive them because we're in the spirit and we know it's spiritual. Amen. We know this is a spiritual battle that we're in. Hallelujah. Amen. So, this continues right in our walk. As the Lord, the Lord says, right, Matthew 18, 21 through 22. Matthew chapter 18, 21 through 22. Then, Peter, then came Peter to him and said, Lord... How oft shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? Till seven times. Right? It's, it's, you could get to a point, and it feels like this. It feels like this after you continue to have been trampled by someone, and another someone, and a trampling, and a trampling, and a deeper cut, and a deeper cut, and you've been forgiving and forgiving. It can get to the point where you feel like, man, I've forgiven already seven times in one day even. And, but Lord, do I got to keep on doing this? It's getting heavy. It feels like I'm, I'm getting weak. Right? But God says, <laughs> with, with man's strength, it's impossible to do these things, right? But by God, by the power of God, the grace of God, all things are possible. With forgiveness, this is it. Right? This is one of the many things all things are possible with Christ. We're always able to forgive when we're in Jesus and walking in the Spirit. When we're, pulling, when we're pouring more into the carnal things, it will get harder to forgive others. That's why Jesus says, seek on those things which are above, heavenly things, continuously. Don't be consumed by this life and this world and these matters that will try to keep your heart and your mind to share over here on these things. And you're battling unforgiveness, battling unforgiveness. Well, Jesus says, fixate your heart and your attention, your devotion onto me even the more. I will bring the increase of what you need to let them go. I will bring the oil from my throne to heal the wound. And I will bring what you need, which is all by his power and his strength. Don't let the earthly things take your mind off of what's important. Forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Amen. So how many times should I forgive? I feel like I've been trampled and trampled and trampled. What does Jesus say? Verse 22, Jesus said unto him, I say unto thee, until seven, seven times, but until 70 times seven. Hallelujah. 70 times seven. Was that 490? Yeah. <laughs> 490 times, right? 490 times. Basically, the Lord says, you want to put a number on, it's going to be really high. Let's just put it to the point where it's going to be so high it's going to be like, can someone even sin against me 490 times in a day? Because that would be a nonstop every, like, that would be, be a lot, right? So the Lord's just saying, it's going to be a continuous thing. Don't worry about the number. Even when it feels like it's too high and you feel like you're in a place where you could be qualified to hold on to the bitterness, rightfully so, no. That's not what God says at all. God says, you need to forgive. And it's no matter the treacherous thing if it's someone that will not repent, then they're not to be around, right? You're not going to be a doormat. God never wants you to be a doormat. Look at the Lord Jesus as his grace. God's grace is not to just abide and abound for you to live in sin. 
He says, my grace ain't no doormat. If you think it's a doormat, you can continue to be in the world and be another false error and, and, and the spirit of error and all this false doctrine. Are you just going to keep on trampling my word? Then there's going to be a judgment against you. And the judgment will come either by a preacher or a pastor or a minister or someone that the Lord said to preach truth unto you. Let that truth of that preaching be a witness to bring you into salvation Amen. and not a witness that will come and condemn you at the end of the judgment. Well, I brought you this doctrine by the pastor so-and-so and you rejected it. Yeah. That was my grace unto you that was sufficient. And if you would have been humble to receive it, it would have been sufficient until the day, until the end to meet me here in this place without your wrinkle. I see the wrinkle. Mm -hmm. I see the blemish. I see the garment. You thought you could still just continue in the world and continue to hold on to unforgiveness and you didn't really want to face forgiveness, right? Because those wounds we don't want to face, we want to run from because that's the flesh. The flesh wants to run from the spirit. But see, the Lord says that we ought to be knowing the will of the Lord and abide in the will of the Lord. Right. You cannot be ignorant. Don't be ignorant of the things of, of the Lord, right. but gain understanding and know his will. His will is to forgive and the flesh don't want to. I know of this because this is things that I've struggled with many a times in my life. But God is faithful to show you. And God is faithful to heal you most of all. And that you set them free. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And so, no matter what or how many times, this is a commandment of the Lord. Amen. That we be tenderhearted. Amen. Because what, is, what does unforgiveness do? It makes your heart heart. Or right. your heart heart. Right? The tender heart it feels. It's sensitive to the Spirit of God. It, it'll, it'll move at the presence of the Lord. It'll move when the Holy Ghost makes an unction on you to go into your prayer closet and pray. He reveals such a thing and that you release it, as we'll get into. How to really, truly forgive someone. Amen. Amen. And I know that this has been expounded upon recently within the church, but as the Lord led, we're going here and staying in it today. Lord willing. Thank you, Jesus. So a must to forgive, right? So Matthew 6, 15 declares to us, But if, you, if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. That's Matthew 6, 15. Yep. Because you could have, see, God wants our hearts. And when God wants our hearts, he wants to purge everything, heal everything, consume it, so that he is now pulling and testing the reins and that we are completely submitted unto him. He wants us to forgive others and blesses us and sets us free. And that also the compassion that he had upon us, that compassion overflows unto others to set them free. Because it's also when you're in a quarrel or you have the unforgiveness of a, a situation that rises up, the other party knows that you're in bitterness against them, so it hurts them as well. But when you see the person come to you and say, oh, you forgive me? It will bless them, and, and, and that compassion will release them of that burden, that hurt, that pain that they trampled onto you, and it'll help them. You see that the will of God continue to be made manifest, such as the kingdom of heaven. That the Lord, is, as in the scriptures I was even speaking last night on the, on the altar call, is that last night the Lord just speaking that in the scriptures, that when the Lord, right, Really, it says when, when, when the, the servant's Lord, right, his, his commander's chief, the one that was in control of things, he owed him much money, much, 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 much money that was so much he could not repay, period. Right? If I was to owe $10 billion, well, how is that going to happen? Okay, the same, but it's in the spirit. So the Lord, I had so much debt and weight of, 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 of sin, and God consumed it all with his forgiveness. Amen. All of it. All of it. The devil might try to come and bring, well, what about this? You know, that, that's, that's pretty dumb. Well, what about that? Well, God says, I forgive all sin except blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. That's the only one. Even you blaspheme his name. I'll forgive that, but you better not blaspheme the Holy Ghost. He consumed all that with his forgiveness. Thank you, Jesus. So we, we stand on the truth and we know that we're forgiven. But that compassion that the Lord had upon us, we are to have unto others. Because the scripture says that same servant, that same man, when he got forgiven of all that mountain of debt, he went and quickly seen another man that owed him like, it was like a dollar, a hundred bucks, whatever. It was very low money. And he quickly grabbed onto him, right? Violently getting onto him. Where's my money? 
So you see the amount of compassion that was poured out to him, but his heart was not right, not forgiving others as soon as he seen the next man that owed him a little bit of money. He was violent against him and wroth against him. And then the Lord brought him back. I forgave you of much and you can't even forgive of this little, right? Bind him in chains and shackles, amen? And put him away into weeping and gnashing and wailing of teeth because that is not of God. We cannot say that we're of the Lord, that we love God and that we know God and we don't forgive others. It's just sometimes it is harder to the flesh to forgive. But that's when the word comes to instruct us and, and comfort us in these things. We're still in this life. We're still in this vessel. The flesh is contrary to the spirit and the spirit contrary to the flesh. But nevertheless, God be glorified. He's greater in us than he who is in this world. Amen. Amen. He's able to do all these things. But when we continue to go towards the carnal things, so into the carnal things, it makes it harder to do the spiritual things. That's why God says, so more into the spiritual things. That way the spiritual is not hard for you to do. You're wanting to do more spiritual. You're sowing more into the spiritual. More fruit comes of the spiritual. And your forgiveness flows as it should, me to you and to onto others. And not in just being stuck in your own heart by your own flesh, not letting it out. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. And this is, this is warfare as we know. I'm going to get to 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Thank you, Jesus. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, 10 through 11. Thank you, Jesus. So uh, 2 Corinthians 2, 10. To whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgave anything, to whom I forgave it, for your sakes... Forgave I it in the person of Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Right here, fixated. Verse 11. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Still on forgiveness. This, this warfare that comes, his devices... There's so many of his devices. The Bible says, be wise as serpents, yet gentle as doves. God says, don't just be ignorant to his things. No, and God will show you and give you the godly wisdom you need to see and how to override Satan's device and overcome it truthfully. Amen. But don't be just ignorant, right? He says, we are not ignorant of his devices. So we're going to speak on the ones today, right? So there's many different things. It could be a lack of respect, a, a lack of love, you know, and, 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 or, or we get deeper, right? That, that someone walked away from a spouse and there was a fight for three days and they didn't come back, whatever the case is. Whatever it is that's going on, even just speaking to someone rude, it can try to harbor bitterness and unforgiveness. Jesus says you've got to quickly forgive. The quicker, the better. The quicker, the better. Amen. Because this, this device, these things, these situations, these spirits, these demons, these networks that try to come up and cause contentious situations or whatever the case is, they try to get us to what? React in our flesh. Jude 123 says that we need to hate, I'm going to, Lord Jesus help me, that the, that the garment not be spotted, that we hate the flesh and what it does so much that we die to it for real and that we know that this flesh is trying to spot our spiritual garment. Satan tries to rise up our flesh in warfare that we put spots on our spiritual garment by blaspheming, by cursing, by not trusting in God, by not forgiving others and all these different things. Forgiveness, huge. We are not ignorant of his devices. I see that this has been going on all day. I've been feeling weak and now this situation arose to try to make me not forgive my son, my daughter, sister so-and-so, pastor so-and-so. I rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going to go in the prayer closet, and the Lord is going to help me. Because truthfully, as it was even spoken by Pastor Kip, glory to God for our apostle, amen, that he spoke in the Holy Ghost how to forgive. The instruction in the scripture, how to forgive truthfully. It's one thing to say, I forgive them. And that's good. That's a start. Oh, that's a beautiful start. But we want to see in the scripture even just how the healing happens. The miracle, the letting go for real happens to where when the memories come back of the devil and try to remind you what they did to you, it's forgiven. That wound isn't there to where it's touchy no more, right? One little key word can, can touch and if the wound's still there and it hasn't been forgiven and it's still open, 
the devil knows and he'll he'll send a little thing just to go and touch it and it'll make you explode it'll make you get in your flesh it'll make you say things that you wish you ought not to say that you have to repent for later mm -hmm. god wants us to be healed and set free from these things consumed by his forgiveness that's all we need Man, if we're forgiven by Jesus, by God Almighty that created the heavens and the earth, how are we going to put someone else as an idol before the Lord, right? Because if we're putting someone else and not wanting to truly forgive them, they just became an idol because God Almighty on the throne says, you better forgive It's a commandment. If not, you will not be forgiven. You won't make it in. This is a big deal. So if we put the person, well, Lord, they did this and I was out there for weeks and they didn't do this and they shut me out and they, they took my money and they took my car, all this. God says, what does that have to do with anything? I've forgiven you of way more than that situation you just said. Let me go back. You know, we want to see what I threw into the mountain of the sea of forgetfulness, right? That mountain that you had. God doesn't really pull things up like that. That's the evil one that comes and reminds you of your past. God says, I've forgiven you of, of much, all of it. And you know the list. But honestly, God knows the list is way more, longer than what we think is our sin. Our sin goes way, way back. So much more than we can fathom that God has forgiven us. So how dare we allow even our own selves to feel justified to allow someone to not be forgiven and they become an idol for real in the way of our salvation, right? So we're not ignorant of Satan's devices. Satan will try to rise up things, even in the, 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 the places of co-workers, all these, and they could seem little, but for real, if it's there and, it, and we feel some type of way, we need to, we need to go on prayer. And then because prayer is the way of the outlet, the communication source, our, our communication line with God that so many things happen in prayer. The power of prayer is incredible, amen? So especially with forgiveness. Amen, that we're not for, uh, ignorant of Satan's devices, right? And that not also, if we don't forgive, the Lord won't forgive us. Amen, and so it brings us back even to, amen, thank you, Jesus, that we confessed our sins, right, to the Lord. Lord, help me, right? We, 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 we poured out ourselves unto the Lord. We truly repented for us who have and have given our lives unto him for real, we didn't know his ways, sound doctrinal, but the Lord kept us and guided us. Why? Because our heart was right. God wants your heart. He don't want your words. He wants your heart. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. And so those, though, right? Proverbs 28, 13. This is a sin. To, to not forgive is a sin. Because in the passage where it talked about the servant being forgiven of much, but then he didn't forgive of that little bit of debt to the other person? That was a sin. The way he handled it, not forgiving. It's a sin. Sin disconnects us from God, and sin keeps us out of the kingdom of heaven. He says, if you don't forgive, you ain't going to be forgiven. It's a sin to not forgive. So, Proverbs 28, 13, He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. No, yeah, you'll feel that in this life now, and you what we really are shooting for is the eternal kingdom. You ain't going to have eternal prosperity with the Lord and his kingdom, right? But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy, right? We want to have this communication with one another. If any brother have an ought against another, go to that brother. It even says if you even know that your brother have an ought against you, go to him. Go and talk about this thing. Bring it to the light. A lot of times there's misunderstandings. Sometimes there's just, it, it ain't, it, there's something going on on one side or the other, but let not that side be us. Let us always be the ones that forgive and be truthful in our speaking and be truthful in our, in our, in our, in what we're feeling in our heart that we're not holding something back, right? That we're not holding something back, that we're not trying to cover up how we're feeling with, oh, I'm okay, everything's okay. No, let's be truthful and let's talk about it. Let's not cover our sin, right? Let's not cover unforgiveness. Let's confess it and forsake it. Amen? And if we've hurt one another, confess it. Please forgive me, right? If the situation arises, we didn't even know. Forgive me, I didn't even see it that way. I didn't know. Please you know, forgive me. Then we go into prayer. Lord, help me. Help me that I not overlook these things and be ignorant to this situation that Satan's trying to use as a tactic of warfare in my marriage, my children, in the ministry, the life, of everything entirely. Lord God, I didn't see it this way, but I see devils, the devil's using it, and he's trying to use it for one of his devices to cause bitterness and unforgiveness in other people. Lord, help me. And God is faithful. And then God is faithful. Thank you, Jesus. 
And then because getting back to what God did for us, he brought us up out of the miry pit, right? Mm -hmm. He brought us up out of the miry pit. Uh, Psalm 40, verse 2. Thank you, Jesus. And he brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet up on a rock and established my goings. Thank you, Lord. Established my goings. And when he pulls us up, forgives us of much, his establishment of our goings is to go and forgive. Start a new life in Christ Jesus. All things, all things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Your heart is new. Your thought process is new. Be ye transformed by the, by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that perfect and acceptable, good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Entirely establishing our goings. When people come and, and, and things rise up where it's, it's, well, Lord, they did this. He says, forgive, forgive, forgive. Quick, quick, quick. And the more you do it, the easier forget, or the, the easier it gets. But we have to stay in prayer. Amen. So thank you, Jesus. So we'll, we'll get to it. Amen. So um, let, let's get to Mark chapter 11, verse 25. Right here is where we'll start off with this. So Mark eleven twenty-five. 25. And when ye stand praying. So is it just speaking? Let's, let's really, you know, we really get into the spirit. And this is what was revealed. And it's so beautiful. Just speaking, oh, I forgive him, I forgive him. That's one thing. That's a good start, like I said. But no, let's get to the spirit of God. Lord, how do we, how do we deal with this thing? And even as Bishop VP was saying, you, can, you can't, when you have unforgiveness and you have bitterness and those things in your heart, you truthfully can't clap it out. You can't worship it out. It, it, you'll get a touch in the presence of God, but that thing will still be in there for some reason. Because the reason is it was a, a transgression that was cut so deep, it's a wound. God wants to get to the root of that wound and heal it. Thank you, Jesus. So when, and when he stand praying, we got to be in prayer for unforgiveness. This is the key to forgiveness, prayer. When you stand praying, forgive. If you have ought against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. Thank you, Jesus. So this is a we. This is a this is a commandment. Amen. There's no other way around it. But prayer is how we got to get to this. So there's just two examples. Amen. That we're going to go over again. Acts seven. Thank you, Jesus. So Acts chapter seven, verses fifty-eight through sixty. We're going to look at the example that's, that's, that's so well known of Stephen being stoned to death. What Stephen spoke cut their hearts so sharp because the word that came out was sharper than any two-edged sword. It was truth. Lord Jesus. Let not people turn into a Pharisee, which are hypocrites. Amen. The Lord says your righteousness ought to exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees. Right? Hallelujah. But the heart has to be right. And so when truth comes to you, don't harden it to where now you become a hypocrite and a Pharisee and you go and condemn others. Hallelujah. But you are just as, just as dark in, in situations when the judgment comes back onto you and you think you're so holy, you think you're so righteous and you're not. Thank you, Lord. But let it not be when the word comes out that we don't be humble to receive the correction that we have unforgiveness. For well, I don't believe... You know, it should be uh, spoken that way of how I should live my life. But when it's of the word and it's of God and it's sharp and it's, it's a two-edged sword, let that thing come out and take out that, that uncleanliness in your heart and your mind and your thought process that you get renewed and growing in righteousness in God. Amen. Because what do the Pharisees do here? What do they do to, the, to Stephen, right? And so verse 58, and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. Amen. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God. Amen. So don't let the word that comes forth prick your heart to where you want to pick up stones and stone someone. Let the word come forth and, and deliver you and that you humbly submit to the will of God. 
But nevertheless, when we're walking with the Lord and we're speaking truth, because truth and love go hand in hand. If I don't love you, I'm not going to tell you the truth. But if I love you, I'm going to tell you the truth. That's godly love. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. So, and they stoned Stephen, calling upon God. So uh, Stephen was calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. You see right here, this, this brutal event, right, that is happened and happens and will continue to happen. If we are, 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 are worthy enough to suffer this type of persecution, this type of death in the flesh for the name of Jesus, then God be glorified. But I'll tell you now, you got to be in the spirit for real. Because you're out there trying to minister to people. You're out there trying to be used of the Lord and to save the lost. And you're doing it for their soul. You're doing it out of love of God. And they turn around and want to kill you. You completely have to be in the spirit. Because your flesh will quickly want to do the opposite. We we'll want to protect your life, preserve your life, run for your life, or even fight for your life. Which is not of the Lord, which is of the flesh. That's why God says, if any man will come after me, let him first deny himself, pick up his cross, and follow me. If you lose your life now, you shall gain it. If you try to hold on to it, you shall lose it. So if this thing comes up like it did to Stephen, you got to lay your life down. This is all, again, of the Spirit. And how do we, if we're pressed in that type of measure, have to be in the Spirit, knowing of the will of the Lord? What is the will of the Lord? To be praying, Jesus, hallelujah, calling upon the Lord, saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. He was in prayer. So we can imagine if we were to be pressed like this, stones assaulting you to the point of physical great injury of death, that you're not in prayer. Man, that, that it's, it's going to be something else boiling up inside you. It's going to be something else boiling up in your flesh. It could be something else to pick up the stones and start starting to fight back and all this. But when you stay in the spirit, Lord, then everything of the flesh dies. Now you're in the spirit, Lord. Help me, right? Lord, I forgive them. Lord Jesus, hold this not to their sin. To be even pressed in this type of situation and still say forgive them, that is all of the spirit of God. Nothing of the flesh. Why? Because the flesh is dead. The flesh has been dying. This is being a disciple of the Lord, right? These things come up on the church, which they will. Such great tribulation since the world has not seen will come, is coming for the church. The persecution is going to let this, it ain't going to be much out there for the world. They're all going to bow the knee, get the mark and continue eating and thriving and doing their thing. The church is going to be persecuted. We're to be trained up in this way now, praying with forgiveness of things in our past, that things like this come up against us, we can forgive in prayer. Amen? That why we fall asleep in peace. That we fall asleep with not bitterness and unforgiveness at the last part, right? He who endures till the end. Imagine this, right here with Stephen as the ex a prime example. Obviously, I'm going to say the prime is the Lord Jesus, the Son of God that was crucified. Amen. And then Stephen, right? So we see that he who endures till the end, you could be all the way up on your cross, and imagine they, 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 they be kicking you and cutting you and doing these things and you, you don't forgive them. You start cursing at them. You, your flesh start jumping what Satan wants. Mm -hmm. Have you, did you really endure to the end? Mm -hmm. right? are, 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 you, are you right there being ignorant of Satan's devices? Your flesh is getting the better of you? Or are you abiding and remaining in the spirit of the Lord, knowing what the will of the Lord is? That many shall enter to, into the kingdom of heaven through much tribulation. Mm -hmm. You got to know the will of God. You can't be fed from false prophets and false teachers and false evangelists saying, oh, you can just go tattoo your body. It's not a sin. What he met in Leviticus was to try and channel demons and this and that. Yeah, the sorcerers and the witches and the warlocks, they know them things and they do it deeply. But don't you know the same little tattoo shop is the same doorway for that demon, that entity to enter in. You preach that type of uh, falsehood. You preach that type of her uh, damnable heresy. The blood is upon that man's hands. Something I was seeing recently. The blood is upon that man's hands. He's justifying going and marking the temple of God. And he thinks God's not going to have a judgment for him if he doesn't repent and tell the people to repent that are misleading. You're trying to raise up and justify worldly Christians, which is from the Satan's kingdom of the world. 
You go and make a blood sacrifice with a needle and ink and this and that, and you think it's for your mom, you think it's prayer hands and it's for Jesus. Jesus says, don't do that. Mm -hmm. You're opening up doorways for spirits. Why do you think when you get a tattoo, it keeps getting consuming? There's something about it. It's just, I can't stop. I got to keep going. And, oh, I love the glory of the flesh and look at my flesh and all this. It's demonic. You're letting spirits come in and, and come and entertain you and embody you to the point where demon worshipers work in the tattoo shops, right? Where Satan worshipers, these, these people in false religions work in the tattoo shops of secret arts. These secret arts go back to Leviticus, yes, and he says, don't do it. Don't even pierce your body. Take it to a simple perspective of a government F FBI building, your, your superior courthouse building. You go up with a can of spray paint, you put one line on that, you're going to come and get corrected swiftly. Fines, jail time, might get on the newspaper for doing this and doing that because it's that type of building. How much more are we better than that building? Amen. Much better than that building. We're the temple of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So God didn't say just come and tattoo your eyebrows, come and tattoo some prayer hands and all is good. The old laws passed away. It's not a sin no more. No, no, no. You're defiling the temple. God will, God will come and destroy you. You destroy the temple of God. God will destroy you. That's inside and out. He says, first clean the inside of the cup and the out. Don't just have your inside think that you're clean, believing a false prophet, a false preacher, thinking that you can abide this way and God doesn't have judgment against that thing, right? We have to know the will of God and abide in it. Back to the word, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We got to have this type of forgiveness. Yes. We gotta have this type of forgiveness, amen. And when we hear things come against what is truthful, can't harden our hearts and go lean to the falsehood. You gotta to come to the Lord for real, amen. Thank you, Jesus. And I pray that man, that preacher, all the people that justify smoking, drinking, living in the world, cigarettes, tattoos, all that, lust, for it all, it goes all the way around. From the smallest of what we think is sin all the way to the largest, sin is sin, the wages of sin is death, Romans 6, 23. You justify that sin, God will say your blood is the blood of them is required upon you. I pray that man and all those people who preach heresy repent in Jesus' name. Amen. Luke 23. We're going to get to the example of Jesus now, of how he forgave, even at the most extreme point, which is crucifixion at the very end. He who endures to the end shall be saved. So he who endures forgiving to the end still shall be saved. Luke 23, verses 33 through 34. Thank you, Jesus. And yeah, make no cutting, no mark for the dead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, the, the, yeah, the sacred arts go back to some, some dark stuff of the tattoos. But even though it's colored and it's a rainbow and it's godly, that's not of God. Quit trying to justify Jesus on top of what you want to do. Jesus never said to go and mark your body. Jesus never said to go and cut, put the piercing here and do this and do that. Now you're a priest. Now you're saved. Now you're sanctified. No, that was all of Egypt. All of Egypt. But back to Luke 23, 33. And when they were come to the place, which is called Calvary. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. See, this is where he went. He went to Calvary to carry all that sin away from us. He went to Calvary. He went to, he went to Golgotha all the way to save us, to redeem us out of that sin, out of the lies of the devil, to purchase us with his blood. Hallelujah. Don't you know when, when, the, when he purchased us with his blood, we are now his for real? Thank you, Jesus. They, there they crucified him and the male factors, one on the right, the other on the left, right here. Then said Jesus, Father. So what did he do? He opened up in prayer. Father, he's showing us, right? The man Christ is the flesh. That the fullness of the Godhead bodily was dwelling in. Still showing us, this is what you ought to do, y'all. Right here. Father, forgive them. You go into prayer. Jesus, Lord, Heavenly Father, forgive them. Why? For they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. So these two examples of Stephen and mainly the Son of God, Jesus, amen, God manifests in the flesh, showing us how we enter into truly forgiving one is approaching the throne of God, going into prayer, 
Oh, you can just say you forgive them. Yeah, but then you see that thing still kind of be there and that wound still be there and you, you feel like it's not really set free and you're not free indeed. Like, what's going on? So we go to the scripture and we see, well, Lord, how did you forgive? How, how did how did Stephen? How, how do I really need to get this key of the kingdom the kingdom of heaven? These keys to set me free for for real now and enter in. I don't want to be ignorant of these devices, Lord. I still feel something. God says, "Go into prayer, Father." Hallelujah. Stay before the throne, the Lord and His presence and who He is supremely will show you this person back then. God all about that, Lord Jesus. He said, you need to forgive them and let it go. Lord, I lay it down at your feet. I cast my crown down at your feet, Lord God. I humble myself before you and I exalt you for who you are. Lord, please forgive them for they know not what they did to me. They were being used of the wicked one themselves. They were full of demons themselves. They didn't even truthfully know. And even if they were fully in will and agreement with it, even as they were doing unto you on the cross, I still forgive them. Lord, help me. Heal me from this thing, Lord God. I don't want to have this unforgiveness towards them or anyone. Lord, please heal me of this wound and let this be truthful and a desire, Lord God, that is birthed of you and continues to be engrafted and birthed and grown in me. This is what God wants to hear. This is where God is well pleased. This is when God will pour out his oil and will bless you, will heal you. You'll feel lighter. You'll have victory. You won't see the thing no more the same. Hallelujah. And when things try to rise up, on, if it's Facebook, right, memories and this and that, well, guess what? I'm not on Facebook that much no more. I'm taking completely off Facebook, whatever the case is. And even the case, though, in the midst of the season of, of that type of warfare, put away the devices that Satan will try to bring back up to harbor. But when you truly get before the throne, you truly get healed and set free, then that thing can come by you. That's the point where God wants us to be a set free for real. The thing can come by you and you don't have that pain. You don't have that unforgiveness. You don't have that anger, right? Anger. Deliverance from anger. Even last night on the altar call. Thank you, Jesus, or the 12 p.m. altar prayer call. Anger stems from bitterness, unforgiveness. When we can get so angry Oh, the Lord has shown me many of this in myself. Thank you, Jesus. And he's, he purges us. He heals us and sets us free. If we're so quick to get angry, it stems from bitterness all the way to unforgiveness. Because we're still hurt by the thing back then that we've suffocated and forgot about so long ago, we just think that this is life now. And Jesus says, oh, no. <laughs> That's your old life. This new life in me is new entirely for real. You thought I was playing when I said that? You thought I was playing about being set free for real? You thought I was playing about my word? I esteem my word higher than my name, he says. Thank you, Jesus. Heaven and earth shall pass away, and we are just but dust. But my word will never. Hallelujah. His word ain't no joke. Amen. He came to set us free for real. So when we feel, Lord, why, why, why am I rising up like that? Why, why am I so angry? Well, get in prayer. Let the Lord show you. Go get in prayer. The Lord will show you. Hallelujah. Stay in prayer until the Lord bless you and heal you. Stay between you and the throne as much and close as possible till you get up. You feel like as the Lord has just forgiven you of much and that compassion got bursted on you, you have the same to go and explore unto others. I, I love you and forgive you. Hallelujah. I'm set free. I don't even see the thing no more as I used to. Hallelujah. I don't even dwell on it no more. The thoughts come to my head. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Lord, I forgive him. Hallelujah. Lord God, you have healed me from this thing. I'm going to continue to protect my joy. I'm going to continue to protect the peace that you've given me. And I see, Lord Jesus, that your joy is my strength, right? It's Nehemiah 8, 10, that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Bitterness, unforgiveness tries to come and rob us of our joy that the Lord gives us, tries to strip us of our strength. Hallelujah. But God says, he'll be set free and let, let your cup run over. The Lord puts a new song in our mouth. This has been labored on recently as well. Glory to God. Right here in Psalms 40, verse 3. And he hath put a new song in my mouth. Who? The Lord. The Lord has put a new song. The unforgiveness wants to choke it out. The unforgiveness don't want to let the praise out unto the Lord. Because the Lord says, or the Lord of God says, I shall continually offer up the sacrifice of praise with the fruit of my lips. Hallelujah. But God puts the song in. And he wants us to be set free, that we worship him in spirit and in truth for real. And that we be the light, right? 
even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. How can, how can she, how can he be, be joyful? How can he, after what he's been through, sing praise unto God still? How can he, after I just treated him that way yesterday, right, <laughs> be happy today? This baffles the enemy's mind and even, and even people that aren't saved. This is truly having that compassion, that love, that forgiveness that God gave us that we are to have to others, right? That's the first two commandments. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy mind, with all thy soul, with all thy strength. The second is like unto this, right? Love your neighbor as yourself. We want to be forgiven by God? Yes, of course. What does he say in his word? We are to forgive others if we want to be forgiven. We want our neighbor to feel like how we want? Forgive them. That's what we want. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's the right, just balance with this thing. Amen. But glory to God. These things try to choke us, try to choke out the joy. These things try to choke out the peace. Right? And when our flesh rises up, what's going on? Right? We need to be more in the spirit each day and less in the flesh. Amen. So if our flesh is still rising up like it used to, what's going on? Self-examination. What am I doing, Lord? What's going on with me? What's going on, on the inside, Lord? Purge me, heal me, all this. Seek him. Am I still putting th are things still around me that need to be removed? Lord, show me. I'll remove it. I'll cut off the arm if it's making me feel this type of way. I'll cut off and pluck out my eye if it's making me still to have unforgiveness in my heart. If I need to separate and consecrate even the more, Lord, I will because I want to please you and love you and live for you and abide with you, right? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So we get to write those two examples of, of, of the Lord and Stephen. It's in prayer. This is how we truthfully have this forgiveness come down from the throne that set us free and we can set that person free out of our hearts and when it's done this way and it's done by the lord it's a true forgiveness you feel the release you feel the victory within you because the forgiveness truthfully is for you right wasn't the lord's forgiveness for us yes. <laughs> the lord's forgiveness was for us to set us free hallelujah and that is such a victory right there Let's not let the devil come and his devices to make us feel like we're in bondage to being angry again, to, to, to bitterness again, to evil speaking and clamor and malice and all these things. No, God says, put that far away from you. Don't be entangled in that again. We are set free for real. Thank you, Lord. There was, there was more, amen, that was even coming. Um, amen. Uh, but we'll, 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 we'll continue to move forward. Amen. So I'm going to go to Psalm 103. Thank you, Jesus. This is Psalm 103, verse 10 through 14. So this right here is what we want to fixate on. Hallelujah. Verse 10. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. Because if he had, right, where would I be? Where, where would we be? Yeah. We would not be here singing praise unto God and seeking his word and his will. We would be in the weeping and the wailing and the gnashing of the teeth, which is alive right now. People are in torment right now. This is real. This is heaven and hell. This unforgiveness is a heaven and hell issue for real. Thank you, Lord. So if he hath not dealt with us after our sins our trespasses, our iniquities, we see where it's going. How can we do that to others? That's a false balance. A false balance is an abomination unto the Lord. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. He here, them that fear him. Mm -hmm. Them that honor, have reverence, respect, exalt his word as he says, as Lord, as God, his will, his way, or it's the what? The wide and broad way, which is the highway where many there go, right? Thank you, Jesus. We don't want to be on that highway. We want to be on that straight and narrow path through that find it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So we get mercy when we fear and have reverence for the Lord. We have reverence. We have honor and respect him. We see the proud in heart and those that are boastful and proud and prideful. They, by the mercy of God, that's on God's terms. But we stick to what is written. We want to have this. So if we have a place where we're still growing, which we're still growing, right? We have something where we reacted where we shouldn't. Lord, please forgive me. His mercy applies. Why? Because we're in reverence 
of the Lord. Mm -hmm. He, as far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Meaning, when we go in prayer and we forgive, and the memory pop up, or a situation kind of resembling to how we were struggling with, and we had to forgive, and we did that, and a, a resembling situation rise up, we don't go back to how it was and speak of it again. No, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. I'm brown with my tongue in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you. You healed me. Devil, I rebuke you. I see what you're trying to do. You're trying to bring back the thing. Nope. I'm not having that happen. I forgive him. I'm in the spirit now. I'm seeing how this operates. Glory to God. I'm not getting a spot on my garment. No, not today. Hallelujah, right? So he's removed it far as from the east to the west. So he removed it from us and trans our transgressions from us. So the same thing when we forgive others. That thing, I truly forgave you as the Lord did. It's in the sea of forgetfulness. It's done. I'm not going to bring up things about it, right? I don't want to rise it back up and, and resurrect that unforgiveness. No, in the name of Jesus, let that thing be dead. Glory to God. So, verse 13, like as a father pitieth his children, right? So the Lord pitieth them that fear him, right? That when we're walking with the Lord, and we're growing in all these areas, which are real. Some of them are, are, are harder at times for others. We want the Lord to have his mercy and his compassion upon us to help us and pick us up in a time of need, right? In the times of the law, you made a sin of transgression. There was death, depending on what the, judge, what the thing was. And that was it. The law kept it moving. Under grace now, and you have, you have reverence of the Lord and fear of the Lord, his mercy and compassion will come and pick you up. It's a beautiful place that we're in. Beautiful place that we're in. Hallelujah. We needed this. We're in the best times now. Hallelujah. But that's not to say to treat it as a doormat and to trample it. Glory to God. So the Lord pitieth them that fear him, for he knoweth our frame. He remembereth that we are dust. The Lord knows. <laughs> he knows that we were born and shaped in iniquity. We've had all these things happen to us. Things we forget about, he still, you know, you know, he'll say that wound's still there, forgive him, right? And and the Lord knows our frame is what he's saying. He remembers that we're just dust. And from the dust we came, from the dust we'll go. So the Lord will work with us, and by his grace, he'll strengthen us, heal us, set us free. And he'll give us a mind that is in this warfare that we are in after our own souls, how to protect and preserve our walks, our hearts, our minds, and our tongues. And our, our, our whole body, this whole temple. Not to just be careful, carelessly with it, right? A city without walls is overtaken. I'm just paraphrasing, right? As the scripture says that. It's run down. Not just everything coming in and out. No, there's a standard to God. There's holiness to God. There's righteousness. Hallelujah. That he, he, is, he is pure. He is holy. He says, I will be sanctified in them that come, by, come near me. Come nigh me, right? That we are to be consecrated, sanctified, set apart, holy, as the Lord said, be ye holy as I am holy, as we want to enter into his presence. Hallelujah. Not just come and offer up any false fire, any strange fire, oh, the Lord will accept this. The, 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 the prophet on YouTube said that. He had a mass following. He must be preaching the truth, right? The Lord delivered him from deep demonic magic spells and all these things he used to do. So what he's saying must be truthful. No, 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 no. You better go and seek the scriptures and see Matthew chapter 16 talks about this. The same vessel that the Lord used of the Holy Ghost through Peter to reveal that he's the Christ. The Holy Ghost has blessed, has blessed you with this saying, Peter. Hallelujah. And then same right after in, those, in that same chapter, Satan came and spoke right through that same vessel. Saying, be it far from thou, Lord. You're not going to have to die. You're not going to just live this life. You're all good. You're the Lord. Who's going to bless you? God says, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou savorest the things that be of men. That same vessel that had that deliverance and that, that, that even a word one time of the Lord, you better continue to check that spirit that it's not the devil saying that you can keep your life, hold on to it. Jesus says, no, hallelujah, test that spirit. Thank you, Lord. But God will, God will bear witness and help us in times of this warfare, of this purging, of this healing, of this growth in him, right? Thank you, Lord. That's what, that's what he's about. The ministry of reconciliation. Amen. So it all ties up right with this is warfare when, when, when bitterness and unforgiveness try to come upon us. And so 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 6. Amen. So 
For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. This is the mindset with unforgiveness. We, we forgive in prayer, we let go, God heals us. Now what? We continue with this mindset, which is we're in warfare. But we're walking in this flesh, we don't war after the flesh. I'm not warring against the flesh. I'm warring against Satan and his kingdom and principalities and evil demonic networks. Even if you fell and made a, a sin and it sinned against the Lord, really, but it hurt me, I forgive you. Because I'm not wrestling with you, right? Even someone that's proud in heart that don't want to hear the word is rejecting and living wicked, even them that are completely in the flesh, uncircumcised in heart and uncircumcised in the ears and stiff-necked people, I forgive you because you're not my battle. It's the devil. He's trying to use you to blemish my garment, to keep me from forgiving you, so to keep me from entering into the kingdom. I'm not warring against people. Verse 4, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Right? These weapons of our warfare, why? Let's get back to the, thank you, Jesus. It's even as this. Oh, I forgive them. I forgive them. The world says that. The world will say, oh, I forgive you. I forgive you. That's a beautiful place to be. Let's not neglect that. But that also is carnal in the world of, I forgive you. What about the womb? Because there's even shows I've seen of people dealing with drug addictions and, and fatherhood problems and mothers and this and that. And they go and they, they say, I forgive you, but yet there's still something there. Unless God heals that womb. Unless you go into prayer, right? The weapons of warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So we're not just carnally doing this. We got to get into the spirit of forgiveness. We got to get into the spirit which is in prayer. This is the power of God to truly forgive. This is the power of God, again, again and again, to heal that wound. Right? Because there could be those talks, and I forgive you, and this and that, and the person be going to rehab, and they're working on it, but yet that wound is still there. And they come out a year later, two months later, one day later, back on dope, or they're overdosed. Why? Because they say they forgave, but the wound was still there. They weren't in the will of God. They didn't know the will of God. Right? we got to know the will of God. And God says that our weapons are mighty. They're not carnal. We're not just carnally doing this. Forgiving is what I'm getting to. Again, we are spiritually forgiving in prayer, in the Holy Ghost, in front of the throne, almighty Lord Jesus himself. Amen? And this is anywhere, any place, any time. He that abideth in the secret place shall abideth underneath the, the shadow of the wings of the Almighty, right? Underneath the shadow of his wings. This is where we're kept safe. This is where he heals us, delivers us. Hallelujah. So this isn't carnal forgiveness is what it's getting to, right? This is spiritual, real forgiveness in the Holy Ghost. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. What does that mean? Every single thought that comes into my mind, I'm examining before the word of God to see if it lines up. If it doesn't, I rebuke it. I reject it. I command it out and I forget about it. Casting them down. This is the power of God to forgive. This is the power of God to heal. And this is the will of God. Verse 6, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience. A transgression was made against you, it hurt you, you have unforgiveness. That was disobedience ultimately, right? Because that person, right, there's, wasn't, wasn't walking in the will of the Lord, right? Just be real. So they sin against God and they hurt you. They repent though, whether, honestly, whether they repent or not, you forgive them. But right, but this is where we're getting to with us. This is us having an our readiness to revenge all disobedience that would hurt us to, to bring us to unforgiveness. When? When your obedience is fulfilled, we got to be ready to forget, basically. Let's, right, let's tie this up. Lord Jesus, help us, Lord God. Let's tie this all up that we be so ready, so quick to forgive, so ready to go in prayer. Women so ready to put on their head covering and put on the power on their head and enter into the spiritual realm. 
for the men to uncover their head as if an image of, the, of, of Christ Almighty and that the, the head of them is Christ and the head of Christ is God, that we're in order in the divine order of spirit and we go into, hallelujah, the spiritual realm and says, bind these spirits to cast down imaginations, to enter into the throne boldly, hallelujah, to get the anointing that we need, to get the healing power to heal that wound and that we set them free, ready to revenge all disobedience that was done unto us by and when our obedience is fulfilled, ready to engage in forgiveness, ready to go into prayer. Hallelujah. The flesh will try to hinder those things. No, 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 you can pray later. Pray tomorrow. You're tired right now. You're sleepy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the devil puts those things on us too. But God is greater. God is faithful. When we sow more into the spirit, more swift you are and ready to avenge this disobedience. The more you sow into the carnal, the harder it is to go into this type of obedience. This is why the word comes to instruct us, to correct us, to show us what is the will of the Lord and how to operate, that we be not ignorant of his devices and that we truly walk in the way that God says. Ready, ready to revenge all this disobedience. Hallelujah. So this is the will of the Lord. Amen. This is warfare. This is warfare. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me uh, let me get this real quick. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why? Because I'm going to get to what I was quoting earlier. That's right before Revelations, right? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So Jude, one chapter, and it's this right here. Amen. I'm going to start at verse 23. So Jude 1, 23, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire. Even, I'm sorry, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. I'm sorry, I'm going to take this all the way back up. This is good. Jude 1, 20. I'm going to go down to 24. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Praying in the Holy Ghost, knowing what the will of the Lord is. Praying in those things. Today is forgiveness. Hallelujah. Right? Keeping yourselves in the love of God. So we see prayer is the key thing to forgiveness. Prayer is the key thing to keep us in the love of God. Prayer is the key thing to keep us walking in the spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Right. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And some have compassion making a difference, right? So meaning sometimes you have compassion upon someone. That the transgress, right, the, or the, 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 whatever the situation could be, right, really the preaching, right, the, the ministering to, it's like it's soft, it's delicate, like a lot of preachers only have this, they only have compassion, they don't have no fear of the Lord, right, a lot of people say, oh, you preach hellfire and brimstone, well, don't you know the Bible says that, why aren't they preaching it, because no one wants to hear it, there's two sides of the sword, one is compassion, as we just read, making a difference, yes, as being led in the Holy Ghost, though, not all get the compassion. Some need fear. You keep pampering a little baby and he ain't getting corrected. He ain't have no fear of God in him. You think he's going to continue to, or he's going to repent from his sins? No, I needed the fear of the Lord. I didn't just need compassion. I needed the love of God, the healing of God. Yes, and compassion. Thank you, Jesus, for it. I don't, I don't overlook it at all. But what some need when you're, when you're so, uh, say, proud in heart, when you're so hard-headed, when you're so cold-hearted, you need the fear of God to come and surpass and override all that, to change a person, to change a woman, to change a man. Amen? So the first side of that blade is compassion, making a difference. Yes. Verse 23, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, right? That's the other side. Some need that fear of that blade, but they say that they don't want it, but that's what they need. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. This is where we're, 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 we're getting to. The garment that we have, that we have in Christ Jesus, being baptized in his name, filled with the Holy Ghost. Our garment 
being cleansed by the blood of Jesus, his righteousness. We have to maintain this garment. You don't just get to hop out of the tank and get the Holy Ghost when you get it, right? And say you're all good, you made it in. No, he who endures to the end. We have to endure through this warfare. Again, with unforgiveness, that has to be a huge spot in my eyes. If we don't forgive and we think that we're saved and we have this huge blemish on our garment and we go up to the Lord, he says, look at your garment. You think you're going to come in this way? Hallelujah, right? It's easier to overlook it, to not face it, to not crucify this flesh and do the will of God. But that's all of the wicked one, right? So we got to hate our garment being spotted by this flesh. Amen. Now unto him, this is verse 24. This is, the, this is the hope and the faith that we have when we're praying in the Holy Ghost, in our faith in God. What is the faith in Jesus? Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. This is faith in God. He's able to keep me in this place of I truly forgive and I'm healed. For real. I forgive you. I'm able to keep standing when people come up against me to forgive them in prayer. I'm able to continue walking this walk even unto the point of crucifixion on a cross. Even then, in prayer, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. This is the faith in the Holy Ghost, in prayer, that God is able to keep me from falling. And to present you faultless before the presence of His glory with exceeding joy. What is faultless? Not having a fault, not having an error, right? Not having a spot, wrinkle, or blemish, right? As, as the scripture is saying. He's able to keep that garment perfectly white as the wedding garment. Thank you, Jesus. Amen? This is the faith that we have to have in God, that he's able to do these things. He's faithful to keep us. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Amen? But nevertheless, this is a beautiful word. It's a beautiful word of forgiveness. Unforgiveness is such a nasty, dirty, foul spirit. And that thing can come up strong at times. God is bigger than that spirit. God already has, hallelujah, overthrown and made an open show of Satan and all his kingdom. Amen. We have to have the faith and believe it. So when it tries to rise up against us, we know that we're children of God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. But we are children of God. And that we can forgive, we can continue to walk, keeping our garment in check, right? We have to check our garment. Lord, Lord that, that's when we go into prayer, right? When, when, when things come out of the flesh, right? Lord, what's going on with me? You know, that, that, wasn't, that wasn't of you. That's not, a, the, that's not your will for me to react that way. Lord, what's going on? Let me, let me check myself. Father, Lord Jesus, I seek you now, right? You go into prayer and you, you call out to him. Glory to God, amen. When he does show us things that could be hidden that we, we were deceived by or we thought were all good, God... God say, let it go. Forgive them. Hallelujah. You need to call and let them know. Hallelujah. Go ahead. You know, you need to go, as the scripture says, you have an odd against a brother, go to that brother. Go to that sister. Speak to them directly. Let the communication be of truth. Hallelujah. That deliverance and reconciliation take place, Lord willing. Whether or not, either way, you still forgive. And you will be remaining free and in victory. And ultimately, walking right before the Lord without the spotting of the garment. Amen. Amen. So I praise God for the word. Amen. And um, everything that he's poured out. Amen. This is this is something that's been labored on extensively. Amen. Just to retouch back on it as being led by the Lord. I pray that it be hidden in our heart that we sin not against God. That we sin not against each other. Mm -hmm. Amen. That we not be bitter against one another. Amen. That is the will of the devil. But God says to be walking in forgiveness. Amen. Amen. So glory to God. I praise God for everyone in the house. Everyone online. We love and salute you from Arizona campus. Amen. We give God the glory for everything that he's doing. Love you all. Thank you, Jesus.